Artificial intelligence, everyone's obsessed with it. It's the new and upcoming craze that everyone is capitalizing on with robots, AI assistants, and even art now. To see something that is usually regarded as the expression of the human mind, art to be created artificially is pretty interesting. And whether you believe it's the next movement in art or the downfall of the industry, I feel like it's still definitely going to be here to stay. So one might ask, how will this affect photography? And I think that comes down to editing. Well, this company, Imagine AI, asked me to use their AI editing software. They promised that this new software would greatly decrease my editing time. And unlike presets, which apply the same settings across all photos, this AI software will go through each individual photo and edit it based on my style of editing. So the nerdy engineering side of me was like, I gotta try this out. And the artistic side of me was like, this can't be right. Art is meant to have a human element to it. I have to push the system to its limits. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and go out and take a whole bunch of photos in varying lighting scenarios. So whether it be golden hour and also some night photography and create a very cinematic look to them. I'm gonna put all these photos into the software to see if it can figure out my editing style, right? So I've asked Faye to help me out modeling in this shoot and I've also got Toby as well helping me film B-roll. So enough talking, let's go try and take these photos and push this AI system. Yo, I thought I'd record a voiceover to just give you guys a bit of context. And to be honest, I didn't really want to talk and have to worry about vlogging during the actual photo shoot. Because I think it disrupts the creative flow that you get into as a photographer. Especially when you're working with a model. Anyways, the main concept of this shoot was to photograph a set of scenes I think will be part of a cinematic series with the idea of being lost in the dark and finding your way to the light. And to be honest, this is something that I am myself currently going through since I've now graduated, have a degree, but I also have this online presence and creative side that I want to continue developing. It gets a bit confusing on what I should be focusing on and it definitely overwhelms me quite a bit. So I thought I would use Faye as a model to show vulnerability and freedom that match with the lighting scenarios and also compose with the light instead of just focusing on the basics of composition. This is all quite new to me and it's a breath of fresh air honestly when it comes to developing myself as a photographer and I've still got heaps to learn but overall I'm actually really happy with these photos. Okay, now to the editing process and using the Imagine AI software. I had this whole thing planned out with filming my live reaction on how I actually found the software, but unfortunately a lot of stuff went wrong, like my microphone stopped working and I, I can't even find some of the files. What I can do instead is just give you a rundown of what I experienced so you guys can make an informed decision. So firstly, if you're not familiar with AI systems, you actually need to train the AI model first. So for example, for one of my uni assignments, what I had to do was record a bunch of vehicle sounds. I had to label them what they were, for example, a V8 engine or a V10 engine. And then you would put that into your training model, you will train the AI, and then you'll give it another set of sample data to then go through and then it will be able to categorize what those sounds were. Anyways, that's really similar to this use case scenario where I would put in minimum of 3000 of my own edited images, edited with Lightroom presets, go check them out, into the AI training model of Imagine AI. And then it will go through, understand the way I edit, so then I can then upload photos into that training profile and have those photos edited the way I want them to. And it's honestly quite smart as well because you don't actually need to upload a bunch of your already edited JPEG photos. Instead, they want you to upload a Lightroom catalog which contains a lot more data on how you edit your photos. And I actually think that's really smart. And remember when I said 
I'm going to try and go out and take a whole bunch of photos in varying lighting scenarios. So I'm going to put all these photos into the software to see if it can figure out my editing style. Well, don't be me and try to use multiple editing styles to train the one profile because what ended up happening was the software almost took an average of all those editing styles and granted it still had some of the characteristics of my editing style for example a lot of soft tones but what ended up happening was a lot of the colors were really skewed for example the bright sunlight was more pink and the nighttime photos just didn't make any sense in terms of how I would actually interpret them so what should have I have actually done instead of uploading everything to the one training profile I should have created separate ones that were more specific to each individual style. For example, I should have made one that was sunset and a separate one that was night, and then upload all my edited photos and use those profiles to then edit the different sunrise, sunset, and night photos that I took, right? But with that being said, instead of just exporting all the edited photos as final JPEGs, what it actually does instead, which is once again really smart, is import everything back into a separate Lightroom catalog. So you can actually go through and redo adjustments that you want to. And that's exactly what I did to create the photos that you see now. And you can actually go through and see all the individual adjustments that the AI model did for all these photos. Like it actually went through and redid all the exposure properly and it will do minute adjustments with the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, all that sort of stuff, which is really, really cool to see. So going back to what I think of this software and how it fits in my workflow, I'm not too sure if it's the most optimal choice for more of a self-expressive type of photography. Yes, you can technically do what I just described before and use it kind of similar to a preset, but I think sometimes what that can do is almost lock you into a editing style for that photo. And it might not actually be the editing style that you want to try to convey but with that being said, I can 100% see this being incredibly useful for client work. For example, I have a friend who does a lot of client work for a lot of restaurants and food spots around Melbourne. Let's say he needs to edit 2000 photos for a client. What he can do is go through and import his already existing Lightroom catalog with 5,000 photos edited in a very similar manner, use that to then edit the new set of photos. And what he can do as well with that time saved, he can then go through and make even more minute adjustments to deliver better quality photos for roughly the same amount of time. And then once he's done, he can just add those photos back into the training profile again, further refine it and make the profile even better. Like how sick is that? So if you want, you can go check out Imagine AI for yourself. Link is in the description box down below. You can also check out my presets as well. There are 40 tutorials, 40 presets and 80 raw images for you to play around with. Once again, thank you to Imagine AI for reaching out to me. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff and I will catch you later. Bye.